Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with another video in the series Youngest Grandmaster in History. Something happened that I need to tell you about. I've made five videos so far on this topic. It all started with Pragnananda Ramesh Babu, the prodigy from India who became the youngest international master. Two years ago. Since then I've made five videos, four of those are on Pragnananda about his progress to see if he also would become the youngest grandmaster in history and one there in the bottom left was on Nodirbek Abdu Satarov, who became the second youngest grandmaster in history. You can find these videos in the playlist and the link to the playlist is in the description box. These are the ten youngest grandmasters in history. The youngest ever is Sergei Karyakin, the world championship challenger of Magnus Carlsen in 2016. He became Grandmaster at 12 years and 7 months old. You can see Ukraine there. He still was playing for Ukraine at that time. Nowadays he plays for Russia. Abdus Satarov, I just mentioned his name, is the, young, the second youngest Grandmaster in history. Negi is the third and our current world champion Magnus Carlsen is the fourth youngest. Then you see two Chinese players, Wei Yi and Bu Zhangji. Samuel Sevian from the US. Richard Rapport from Hungary. Rajabov from Azerbaijan and Ponomaryov from Ukraine. Those are the 10 youngest grandmasters in the history of our game. And then we have Pragnananda. Pragnananda Ramesh Babu became an international master at the age of 10 years and 9 months old. He was the youngest international master in history. He was born on August 10th, 2005 and to beat Karyakin's record, he had to become a grandmaster before March 10th, 2018. To, be a, to become a Grandmaster, you need three Grandmaster results in three different tournaments. And also you need, need to have a rating above 2500. In November 2017, Pragnananda achieved his first Grandmaster norm in the World Junior Chess Championships, the Under-20 World Junior Chess Championships. And he also got his rating above 2500, so he needed two more Grandmaster results. But he did not get them in time to beat Sergei Karyakin's record. By March 10th, 2018, Pragnananda only had achieved one. Then he played in the Fischer Memorial in Heraklion in Greece in April 2018, where he was trying to achieve his second Grandmaster Norm. In the first round he played against the English Fide Master Adam Taylor, and you can see both players here at the board and let's have a look at their game. Pragnananda was white, Taylor was black. It was played on the 9th of April 2018. E4 from Pragnananda, E5 from his opponent, Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop B5 and Knight F6. Black plays the Berlin defense. D3 is one of the options and Bishop C5. Now the most popular moves here are castling for white or c2, c3. But Pratananda plays the third option, bishop takes c6. D takes, and now you should not think that you can take that pawn on e5, because then you lose a piece after queen d4 because of a double attack. A checkmate threat and threatening to take the knight wins a piece for black. So after d takes e6, Pragnananda played queen e2, a rare move which I suspect Pragnananda prepared for this game. Here bishop g4 seems to be the most logical move to deal with the knight takes e5 threat, which is a threat now. It was played by Veselin Topalov in a game against Rajabov, for example. But Taylor may be trying to sidestep Pragnananda's preparation, played knight d7 to protect the pawn on e5, but of course he's blocking in that bishop. Knight bd2 from Pragnananda, black castled, and knight c4, putting more pressure on the e5 pawn. Taylor played rook e8, and bishop d2, on its way to c3 to put even more pressure on that pawn. Taylor played f6 to deal with the e5 pawn, which is now very well protected. Pragnananda castled queenside. Opposite castling always 
a guarantee for an exciting game. Knight f8 from Taylor. Prakrananda played king b1. Bishop e6. Rook hg1. And there's no prizes for guessing what Prakrananda wants to do. He wants to attack with g4. Rook hg1 prepares that move. Queen d7 from Taylor. Knight e3. Prakrananda is going to point all his pieces at the king side where he wants to attack black's king. a5. Yes, black needs to get counterplay on the queen side. It will be a race. Both players will be attacking their opponent's king. And here g4 directly is stronger as per the engine. But Prakrananda decides to wait with that move and plays knight h4 instead. Queen f7 from Taylor, nice move, combining attack and defense. He has now a battery on this diagonal and the queen can also help in defense of his own king, of her own king. a3, that pawn was hanging on a2, so Prakrananda plays it up. And b5, it looks like black is quicker with his attack. There comes g4 as planned, and b4. And now Pratananda rightly plays a4, preventing black from opening lines against his king. He tries to keep those lines closed, otherwise those rooks would become very powerful against white's king. b3 blade by Taylor, and c4 by Pratananda, again not opening any lines, making sure those lines stay closed, and also more or less blunting that queen bishop battery that's now looking at a protected pawn on c4. Nice move c4 from Prakrananda. Instructive. Bishop d4 from Taylor. And now Prakrananda goes forward on the king side. Here knight g6 is the first choice of the engine to swap an attacker, to swap this knight. But Taylor did not play that. He chose to Take on g5. Rook takes. And now black really needs to get his counterplay in quickly. Queen d7 here is a good move to get a counterplay against this pawn. What black can do is take on e3 and then the queen will attack the d3 pawn with check. And black will get counterplay. After rook dg1 then black can play g6. And the chances are equal, but it's a very complicated position. The engine says the chances are equal. But after rook takes g5, Taylor did not play queen d7, he played a bad move. He played c5. Probably with the same idea, to get the queen to d7, and then having counterplay against a4, and then also d3. But this is too slow, c5 is too slow. Because here comes rook d g1 from Prakrananda. And now queen d7 does not work because white is first. He can take on g7 with check. You have to give the queen for two rooks. Rook takes, king takes, and then queen h5 and white has a winning attack. So after rook d g1 you cannot play queen d7 looking for counterplay. Taylor played g6. And there came queen h5 and white is quicker in the attack and has now a winning position. Again queen d7 here would be too slow. I'll just show you one variation. The best move here is knight takes g6. That's a winning move. And if you take that one then a rook sacrifice. h takes. Queen takes. And if you move with the king to h8 there is mate in two. Queen f6 check, queen g7 and checkmate. And if you move with the king to f8, then white wins as well. Here's a very nice move. Knight d5 is the engine's first choice. I'm sure Pragnadanda would have found it. It takes away the e7 square from the king and also it opens up this bishop. Very nice move, knight d5. If you take it, then there is again mate in two, queen f6 check, queen f7, and the bishop gives checkmate. Very nice variations, hope you like them. 
So all this after queen h5, as I said, white is quicker, and we saw that queen d7 now is too slow. Taylor played his king to h8 to make sure this pawn is no longer pinned, so he's threatening now to take the queen. Pratnananda plays the right move. He takes on g6, sacrifices material for winning attack, breaking up the defense around black's king. Knight takes, knight takes, and you cannot go with the king to g8, because then you lose the queen with knight takes e5 check. It's the rook that gives check to the king, and the knight is attacking the queen. It wins the queen, and the game for white. So after knight takes g6 check, the king did not go to g8. Taylor took on g6, gives up his queen, but he thought he had one last way out. After rook takes d6, he played bishop f7. A nice move to win back material, but unfortunately for him, checkmate is still in the position. He's winning a rook back because of the skewer, but Pratnananda found the right move. Queen h4 is a very nice move. You have to take the material back, and there comes queen f6 check, king g8, and the last move of the game, knight g4, beautifully played. By white. The threat is knight, knight h6, checkmate. That's a big threat. And if you prevent that threat with h6 or h5, then bishop takes h6 comes, and there is again a checkmate threat on g7, and there's nothing really you can do against that. Nice win from Pragnananda. Of course, he had to win this game. He had 200 points, rating points more than his opponent. And he was playing for a Grandmaster Norm, and this was a closed tournament, so a round robin with 10 players. Nine games were played, and the Grandmaster Norm was at 7 points out of 9 games. So Pratnananda needed a quick start in this first round with the white pieces, and he won a very nice game. Hope you enjoyed seeing Pratnananda's attacking skills in action. This was the final Table of the fourth Fischer Memorial in Heraklion in Greece. Pratnananda won the tournament with 7 out of 9 and achieved his second Grandmaster Norm. He only needs one more. And if he does get that in the next 3 or 4 months, then he will be the second youngest Grandmaster in history, which would be quite an achievement. As you can see from this table, Pratnananda played against three Grandmasters. There were three Grandmasters in this field, and he made draws against all three. And against the other six opponents, he scored five and a half out of six and achieved his second Grandmaster norm. This is a picture from August 2017. I played in the same tournament as Pragnananda, and he was very nice to allow me to have his picture taken with me. I never thought I would ask a 12-year-old for a picture, but I did. And then the winner of the book is Joel Lu. All you needed to do was put in a comment and then you were in a draw. So I put all the names in a hat and Joel's name came out. He said in his comment, awesome, thank you for the analysis, but that's not why he won the book. As I said, any comment would have done. Joel wins this book. The yearbook of Chess Wisdom. A very nice book. I read through it. And it is yours, Joel, if you send me your home address to my email to classroomchess at gmail.com. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel. Please leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. You also may want to check out my Chess to Progress channel. The link is in the description box. One of the things I do there is analyze games from viewers who sent me their games by email. And I've done around 60 of those so far. This is Rick for Chester Impress. Thank you for watching.